Creating a nice chart can be very hard. It can take forever to tweak your theme. Thankfully, there are a couple of steps that you can use on any chart. So today, let us cover five things that you can use on any chart that you want. In our studio, our first task is to generate a new chart. Once we have that, we can apply our five changes that we want to use on our chart. So let's begin by calling a data set. In this case, I'm using the Parma Penguins data set from the Parma Penguins package. This data set has a couple of measurements from different penguin species. And if you have seen a couple of our videos, then you know that we really like this data set and use it all the time. In any case, we take that data set and pass it to ggplot. And then we specify our aesthetics where we map the bill length to the x-axis, the species column to the y-axis, and the fill aesthetic is also mapped to the species. And then we simply apply a GM jitter layer. This will give us a chart that looks something like this. This is kind of random all the time. So this is why we should probably add a seed here to make sure that whenever we generate a new chart, we always get the same jittering. This is just something you will have to watch out for when you use GM jitter, because this jittering, this moving up points is dependent on randomness and you fix that randomness to a specific number by setting the seed. Now that this is taken care of, you will want to make sure that you actually can see the colors that you have in your fill aesthetic in your chart. So this is why you set shape to 21, which is code for filled points. And that way you will see the points with filled colors in them. But really the points are quite small right now. So this is why you increase their size. And now that they are so huge, you will also want to lower the transparency to make sure that you can see the points behind some of the points. Cool, with that we have our basic chart and now it's time to apply a couple of theme changes. The first thing that you want to change is the labels of your chart. This is why you add a labs layer and in there you can specify all the labels of your chart. The one label you should start out with is the title. This will immediately tell your reader what it is that you want to show with your chart. Here I have simply put in that Adderley penguins have shorter builds. Once that assertion is in the title, people can check, okay, do I agree with that? And here we can kind of see, all right, the Adderley point cloud here is very much lower than the other two clouds. So I guess this is true. In any case, this title gives your reader an immediate thing he can check or figure out what it is that your chart is about. Once you have figured all of this out, it's time to change the other labels. Here we make sure that the x-axis labels uses something which looks more like English. Before we simply had this bill length millimeter label in there, which is something that you can use in coding, but not something you will want to have in a chart that you present to someone. On the y-axis, you don't actually need a label because people can figure out that these are probably different kinds of penguins, different penguin species, since we already have Adderley penguins in the title and people can find Adderley here. So they will probably assume that Chinstrip and Gen2 are other kinds of penguins and they will know what you mean. So you can save some space there and remove that extra label. After that, you can add some more labels, like making sure that the legend title is spelled with a capital letter. And you can make sure that you have a caption, which will tell your reader where he or she can find the data that this person is looking for. Or you could add some other information that you may find valuable. So that was step number one, pretty easy change. Now let's go to step number two, which is also very easy. Here in this step, I want to make sure that my overall chart looks different. The easiest way to do that is to simply add a theme minimal layer. And once you execute this, the overall theme of your chart will change. Of course, you could also experiment with some other themes. So maybe we should simply copy and paste this into a new code chunk. And here we can replace this with something else, maybe a theme from the GG themes package. And from there, we simply call one of those pre-existing themes, maybe the theme 538. And with that, we also immediately get an overall change of the look of our chart. Step number two was a pretty easy change, but in step number three, we go one step further with this change because this change also sets the stage for something else I really want to do. Namely, I want to make sure that, for example, in my previous plot, the font sizes are large enough. This sounds incredibly boring, but it's so, so important that people can actually read what is on your chart. And the easiest way to make sure of that is to use the theme minimal layer or some other theme layer that you want to use. And in there, use the base size argument and set this to some number so that your fonts gets larger. It's really as simple as that. And while you're in there, you can also change the base family to something which looks a little bit nicer. If you use additional themes like we do here from some other package, then you will have to figure out if the space size argument is there for this theme as well. So with a click hit on F1, you can go to the documentation immediately 
And luckily we see base size is in there too. So let's just put base size 18 in there as well. And then we see that it also makes the font size larger, which is nice, of course. And this way you can make sure that people will be able to read the things that are on your chart, which is important because otherwise you can have the best conclusion or the best analysis in the world. But if people can't read what you want to tell them, they will just ignore what you have to say. In the next step, I want to make sure that our charts never use this pure black color for labels. What I really want to make sure is that all labels are in a kind of grayish color, but not something that is as strong as this strong black color. And the way to change that is to simply add a theme layer. And in there, you will want to change the text argument because this argument is the one that governs all of the text. And what you need to know to make changes there is that most of the stuff that is in the theme layer reacts to elements. So what this means is that for changing this text argument, you will probably want to change an element and not just any element, but element text. And once you have that extra function in there, you can put in all of the arguments from element text by clicking F1 while your cursor is over element text. You can look up what all of the arguments are. And here it's kind of self-explanatory. It's the stuff that well governs text like for example the text color so let's just set the text color to something grayish like gray 30. as you can see this made our chart title and our legend title a little bit lighter and while you're changing stuff in the theme layer you might as well change two more things that it basically changed in all of my charts it is the positioning of the plot title and the plot caption by setting this to plot you will make sure that the title here doesn't align to the panel and same thing for the caption. They do not align to the panel, but to the overall plot. Check out how they move when I execute this. There's lots more stuff that you can change in the theme layer. If you go to the documentation with F1 again, you will see that there's so much more stuff in there. But really, once you've figured out how to change a couple of those, you can change all of them. You just have to remember that a lot of arguments like text need some element function. And once you give that element function, you can specify the arguments from those functions, for example, for element text, it's these arguments for element line, which govern stuff like the grid lines and so on. It will be these kind of arguments and so on. In the documentation, you will always be able to figure out what a, what a given argument will want from you by going to it and seeing, OK, this text argument will want to have an element text stuff. And then you can work your way through the documentation to change the things that you want. For some arguments like plot title position, you will find that if you scroll down, let's find it, it's here, you will see that there it actually has only two values, panel, which is the default, or plot. And then you stick in one of those two values in here, and then you have changed your theme. So in general, this is how the theme argument works. And once you have a theme, you can of course take it and pass it to any other ggplot that you have and adjust your theme that way as well. So once you apply some theme from some extra package, you are never stuck with using this theme exactly like it is. You can always put your custom changes on top of that. All right, cool. This was step number four. Let me give you one final thing that you can do on all of your charts. And this thing is something I really love to do because I cannot stand the default colors anymore. I have created so many GG plots so that whenever I see these colors, I immediately know that someone hasn't really thought about what colors does he want to change or does he want to change them at all? He just went with the defaults, which is not necessarily something bad, but if I can help it, I kind of want to give people the impression I have thought about this stuff. So really what this means is that I just have a go-to color palette that I apply to all of my plots. And in this case, what I often use is the Okabe Ito color palette, which is also colorblind friendly. And the great thing is via the thematic package, you can access the hex codes, for example, like this, you could get three colors from there and then you could stick it into a scale fill manual layer. And in there you can specify what values you want to have for this fill aesthetic. So of course this means that you need to have some colors in there. So this is why we simply put in the colors that we've just extracted. And once you execute this, you will get nicer colors. And the bonus is that this is also colorblind friendly. Okay, and once you have that, you can of course use this layer for our second plot as well and then you have custom colors there as well all right this concludes our last step if you want to have the code for all of this check out the link in the description of this video where we lead you to our blog post that we have written for this video 
Thank you for watching and see you next time.